master your synth by creating drum sounds. I guess that that's today's video. You ready for that? Let's go do it right now. <laughs> Hey, check it out. I'm in a location to thank you for checking out yet another video. If this is your first time here, do not hesitate to click subscribe, hit that notification bell. Whenever I upload a new video, you'll be kept in the loop and you'll not miss out on anything. Stick around till the end of this video. I'll tell you all about the Kitchen Club. I'll tell you all about the Amsterdam Dance Event. I will tell you all about the new patrons and I'll tell you how you can get within the Discord community. If you want to get into working with synthesizers, uh, there are so many out there, you know, you can just choose whatever kind of synthesizer you would want. Would you like a polyphonic synthesizer that plays chords, multiple notes? Would you like a monophonic synthesizer? It's just one um, note that's getting played no matter how many notes you press on the keyboard. Do you need a keyboard on your synthesizer? Do you need a paraphonic uh, synthesizer, which means you can play the different sound sources apart from each other? Now, let's go back into what a synthesizer is, how it works and what it is. The thing you need to understand is subtractive synthesis. Keep that in mind. Now, a synthesizer is made up of a few things. One is the sound source or sound sources called the oscillators. Some synthesizers have one, others have three, others have got two, and they work in various ways. Then the sound passes through the filter. The frequency filter is where you take off sound or you add sound to it, hence the word subtractive synthesis. That's how much you will hear, so you can make the sound lower in the frequency spectrum or higher. And then the last part is the M amplifier and in the amplifier section that means you can determine how loud a sound is going to be now there's another thing that's very important and for today's video the absolute crux and that is the envelope of the sound the ADSR those are four letters you need to memorize and remember attack decay sustain and release how does the sound travel over time when you press the key on the keyboard how long is it going to stay until it fades out or does it need to fade out immediately does it need to be a short note a long note does it need to start and swell out or does it need to just swell in and stop once you release it all those things get determined by the envelope and to create drum sounds that is exactly where it is at because for drum sounds you need specific uh, envelopes and specific frequencies and if you want to master your synthesizer you'll pretty much learn very fast what sounds are going to work in what way and how the synthesizer behaves. This that didn't came to me just like by running in slow-mo through a cornfield getting inspired. This came up on my Patreon page where one of the patrons said dude any synthesizer if you need to know its character if you want to just like get to know it you need to embrace it and make any drum sound that you usually would make or usually would just like take for granted on a drum computer and just like try to recreate it on the synthesizer and that is exactly what i've done and much of what you are looking for it's just going to just like open up the sky and hallelujah that knowledge is just going to fall into your lap let's see if we can just get into how these different synths work. I will just go over how I create some drum sounds and obviously the drum sounds will be available on my Patreon page. Now, without further ado, let's head over to the set and let's create some drum sounds on synths. Are you ready? Let's go. So, here we are. Um, the setup today is different. I've got the Akai MPC a live mark one i've got a subsequent 37 i've got an ob6 i've got a model d and then there's some pedals over on the far side the strymon blue sky the digital delay dd7 and then there's a june 60 by dc electronics which is funny because i've just like tested it out and it doesn't sound half bad now okay what we are going to get into today is first listen to those drums what do you think it is And I'll play that stuff for you in solo so you can hear what I have. Let's go in. I'm gonna go to the pad mixer that I have. First, obviously, to my track. I'll go in and I'll say pad mixer or track mute even. Let's not do that. Let's go into pad mute. Uh, mute. So. 
Okay, now listen carefully. This is my kick drum. All the sounds that you hear right now, I've created on the OB6. So there's a kick drum. I've got a close head. And that's some ducking because what I've done is I did a new trick that I'm probably going to use. Um, the stereo output of the OB6 goes straight to the DM12 Midas mixer. The headphone out, however, with a splitter cable goes into the input of the MPC so I can sample whatever I want on the fly. Now, do it a little bit Octatrack style if I wanted to. So this is how I got the drums from the um, um, OB6 into the Akai MPC Live and that's where I sequenced them. So, snare drum of some sorts. So you, you can hear how a snare drum is from family um, with a um, hat. And then there's an open hat. Yeah, so. So those sounds, it didn't take, take me long to make them. We're going to see if we can do that same thing in a second, right? Nice. Let me just quick fast stop that. Now what you would do is, if I'm going to go in, say I'm going to make a new sequence, um, I'm going to just go in for a blank sort of like page, right? So I'm going to go in and I'm going to use the Model D to create some sort of a, hmm, yeah, drum sound. So let's just name it Model D, Model D. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to find it first. So we'll find it here, Model D MIDI. Yes, it's there. Okay, am I not hearing it? No, I'm not hearing it yet. Because then... Ooh, it's a sweet sound. With a fact on there as well, this is a sound that I have created as well. We're gonna go in, take everything off. First start with one oscillator, yes, I'm gonna turn, well, turn everything off, everything's off. Now, this thing, if you don't know the synthesizer, it consists out of three oscillators. Um, and a noise oscillator right here. I'm going to use the second oscillator, however, and I'm going to put it on a triangle wave. So yes, everything's off, turn this on. Filter all the way up, and then uh, reso all the way down. So listen to the waveforms. Saw wave. This is a square one, square two, square three. Well, what we would want, we need a, the, the, for a bass drum, we need our sound to be as round as we can get it, so. Okay. I need a little bit of attack on there, so I'm going to look at my uh, um, envelope here. It's starting to get there. And I'm going to look at the filter. Well. What I'm doing now is I'm using the filter emphasis or um, the reso to find a sweet spot on this oscillator. Here it's got a little bit of an attack. I'm looking for the letter D here, the letter D for the, the. Now I'm going to pitch it down. Yeah. 
can be a bass drum, right? Yeah. We're going to stick a little bit of noise on there because the thing is, well, with a little bit of noise, I can enhance my attack more. So the noise is on. You can hear it here. That's the noise. And let's lower the levels, obviously. Turn that oscillator on. So sure about the attack still. There's a little bit too much of a clicky ticky in there. And the longer <coughs> your envelope is going to be, the more it's going to turn into an 808. Nice, right? Okay, we've got our kick here. Okay, now that we've got our kick. Yeah. Now, got the step program it in. Um, bam, bam. There you go. Let's give it a nice short. I'm going to go in at 122 BPM. Keep it nice and quiet. can hear a little bit more what's going on. I think I need a little bit more. Ah, oh, nice, man. I love it. There you go. A little bit of noise. Never heard no one. Okay, right? That's the kick drum. I'm going to set it, and leave it there just now. So that's one oscillator that I just used. Now the reason I used oscillator two is because there's pitch on there obviously that I can just like dial in. And what I would want is to look for where the sweet spot is. You can hear that there's some low end content right here. That, that sounds absolutely amazing. Now I will go in and create another track. I call this the um, OB6. Select OB6. I know that the OB6 is what is the MIDI channel. Let me find out quick first. The MIDI channel is 11. Okay. So we know we need to go to 11. I knew it, but I need to make sure it's on 11. What I'll do is I'll go in. Same here. I'll go for snare drum. Should we make a snare drum? Yes, we'll make a snare drum. Cool. Now, I will go in on uh, channel, what is it? And I will create an initialized patch. You'll manual and write means now we have one oscillator playing and this needs to become a snare. So well, let's see if we can find out what's going on. I'm just gonna turn down all the oscillators. So the mixer here, turn down oscillator one, oscillator two, because I need the noise here. Off. 
throw the band pass on. There you go. Short envelope. I'm going to get my filter settings done in a second. Let's just record this in straight. Okay, now. go for oscillator 2 because there you go yeah Yeah, it's coming. Bear with me. Even shorter envelope. I'm trying to take the tone out of it a little bit more because I like because the tone is giving away that I'm using a synth, so I'm going to lower that VCO2. Okay. Get it a little bit more snappy even. Filter envelope. Obviously you have to mix it a little bit, so I'm going to turn on my kick a bit. Shorten my kick a little bit more. Lower it a little bit more. There you go. <laughs> Snare drum, done. Right it. I'm gonna snare drum here. Okay, now time for some hats. Can we use the subsequent to make some hats? Probably. What we got? That's on track nine. I know that for a fact. Okay, turn it on. I 
nice one. A lot of sound I created. Let's uh, go in. I know it's bank four. Bank uh, four is what I'm using. I'm going to make the program go all the way up. Because I know for a fact that this sound. Yeah, that's something that we can uh, turn into an initialized uh, preset. So we'll say in it. Same here. So we've got an initialized preset here. Okay, hats. For hats, we need noise, right? So I know I've got one oscillator playing, that's it. But what I need is my noise. A little bit of drive. And what I will do is, I need to just introduce a little bit of resonance because there's a lot of low end content here, so. Record it straight in. It's a bit on the loud side, so I will but I'll sort it out in a second. This is self oscillating, which means that the resonance is off so high that it starts to whistle. Now let's get this nice and snappy. There you go. Nice and short. Drums. Yeah, there you go. I can you just play around with the envelope here? So the sustain part on the ADSR. Let's see if I can record this. Because that might be nice. Not recording that. No, it's not. Unfortunately. Oh, yes, it is. But I need to just like go straight up. There you go. Well, there you go. Now we've got a bit of a ratchet thing going on. Let's lower this as well. And this is done with no equalizing, mind you. I didn't even equalize anything. I just went straight in and just like, yeah, played it a little bit like so. Now, let's stop this. Stop it and let's save it because we need to save it as well. The thing is, you need to understand what a drum sound does. Now, it looks very simple. I don't think it's very hard, but you need to understand what's going on. So if we are going to look at the sounds individually, like um, the model D, for instance, if I play it as solo, sometimes, even for me, it's, I just need to just like really think on, wow, um, it's still a bass note 
in some so, uh, in, in in a sense in my mind but you need to just like completely focus on what do you want you know now it's a bit inconsistent it drifts here and there but i love that that fact with with the analog synthesizers this is something you need to just like focus on you have to hear the sound in your head and work your way to the box don't do it the other way around don't start tweaking on the box and then get get sidetracked on something else you know just look at what you want there's only one oscillator here that does the trick can you layer it maybe because a lot of people like to layer their sounds let's see if we can do it i'm not sure what's going to happen i'm just going to try something out can i layer this kick into becoming uh, the bigger monster sort of a top kick for instance. That's not bad, is it? And it's all in the mixing, right? It's a bit odd. I think it's a bit... Um, because it's it's off, uh, it's, it's out of tune, is it? Usually you would never play those two oscillators like this, but it makes it a little bit in going into the odd harmonics kind of vibe. And odd harmonics is something which is usable for drums mostly. But something needs to take precedence. So I'm, I'm still gonna go for oscillator two as my dominant sound source. Add oscillator one slightly in there. So without it, neat, nice. Turn it on right here, yeah? Cool. Moving on to the next sound. To be honest, I think that this snare sound, it worked out pretty well. Yeah. Can I enhance it a little bit? Maybe. But the trick with the OB6, I have to admit, it took me a while to really get into it because this thing is a completely different beast than the Moog style um, envelopes. It, it, it takes, it's a completely different thing. So, um, you have to take into consideration that the filter envelope is very, very important on this um, uh, synth in order to make stuff work. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with this. I'm not going to tamper with it, to be honest. It's just built out of so many textures. Maybe shorter. Yeah, it could be. If I'm nitpicky, then maybe the length of the so song could be that, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Save it. And then the hats. Which is really not a high up really, you know what I mean? But. There you go. Now the thing with this machine is you should really save it, which is what I didn't do. I'm going to save it now. Right, save it now. And what I love about it is there's two things that you hear. Listen. So it's also a snare, but you can play around with it. So it's almost three dimensional. Groove. There you go. Simple, easy, and fast. Now, try this out for yourself. Let me know if you can come up with something. I mean, I can uh, go on and on and make this uh, video very lengthy. That's not what I want to do. But um, yeah. Um, hopefully this thing is helpful for you. If you uh, need uh, to know and hear uh, more about it, just uh, uh, yeah, reach out, and I'll uh, yeah, probably tell you on how I am. Uh, can do it even more in depth and if you want to get more in depth on this kind of vibe you have to check out analogcourses.com i'd like to welcome sunisa Smrechak as a new channel member thank you very much the channel is blowing up it's really going we're on 13.4k subscribers at the minute thank you very much for supporting and i'd like to welcome joe Miles and david b as my new patrons 
thanks guys for supporting Patreon is alive but do head out to Discord that's where the magic happens and the magic being the community I'm really really stoked I mean at this moment um, we're actually in Amsterdam during the Amsterdam dance event with the kitchen club we're doing two nights one now it's happening now right now um, and one is happening tomorrow night Unicode came out that he flew out from Canada he's going to perform in a few hours um, Serco is here he's performing then Rodder just drove up eight hours from I think Luxembourg to come and visit us this community is so vibrant it's so new in a sense and at the same time it's like we have known each other like forever so I really enjoy the fact that everyone gets really into this dollars five dollars forever yeah we were really liking it so thank you for watching if you made it this far into the video you are an absolute superstar okay that's how I work it that's how I do drums on synths yeah um this is my way of looking at stuff um and over the last weeks you've seen me just like go from expensive synths to cheap synths I mean it doesn't matter it's not so much the gear it's the person driving it so if you're sitting behind your equipment and you think ah oh, I don't know I mean you can be like me as I was in the beginning and hate manuals and just, just don't read them uh, this might be a trick to just like at least familiarize yourself with the synthesizer and then if you have something that you don't know it, the manual is going to be a much more pleasant read and sit through and yeah I'll just uh, um, want to get you on that kind of tip and if you've got tips and tricks or something that you think that I need to um, look into um, yeah let me know in the comment section below that will be a cool 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 thing now thank you for watching next week there's going to be another video now if not anything else I'll bid you farewell and yeah, I'm in the kitchen I'll catch you next time on another video peace <laughs>
Smrčlak. Smrčak. Smrčak. Sinisa Smrčak. I'd like to welcome Sinisa Smrčak. I'd like to welcome Sinisa Smrčak. Smrčak. If I'm pronouncing that correctly. Smrčak. Smrčak.